she would learn to look after, of course. And tell me, will they live in the main house, or will they have their own cottage? Well, naturally, they would have one of the staff cottages if they were permanent. But I shall only need them for one day. I see. One butler and one parlour maid for one day. Anyone else you'd like to book for one day, Mrs. Bloomsbury Barton? A few footmen, perhaps? I have all the footmen I require, thank you. I shall simply need a butler and an extra parlour maid for Saturday. Because my dear friend, Lady Partington, has graciously accepted my luncheon invitation. By the way, I would appreciate it if you wouldn't let anyone in the town know that this is a temporary appointment. I understand. You want Lady Partington to think that you always have a butler. One has one's position to keep up, Miss Fall. Now, regarding my little account. What little account? You haven't done anything yet. That is for the undergardener and the tweeny that I sent you last week. Oh, those. I dismiss them for impertinence. And the next time you send a couple, see that they have a civil tongue in their heads. Another undergardener and tweedy for Mrs. Bloomsbury Barton. Making twelve this year. Yeah, you rolled on. Silly old Drive on, Humphrey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Name? Gummidge. Oh, I. O R. Gummidge. How do you spell that? I don't rightly know, Missus. I never had no cause to write it down. In words and ease, it's G W U R M R M where I would D with G were E so Gummidge. Gummidge. And what's your name? Aunt Sally. I'm a Lutter, Sir A Yes, I've got that. And what's your second name? I don't have a second name. Any more nor what does the Queen of Prussia have a second name? I'm known throughout the world as Aunt Sally. Oh, I see. You mean that's what your families call you? You must be a nanny then. Huh? Oh, that's a good missus. Hey! Does she look like a nanny then? You were saying I look like a blooming villagot next. So you do. <laughs> you shut your face or I'll shut it for you. And it wrote up, missus, to get back to what we come here for. Uh, we were, we're looking for a couple of jobs, you see, to earn some wages. On a of we're saving up to get married. Speak for yourself. I happen to be saving up to go to Egypt on an aeroplane. <laughs> the position here for a couple. You would be the kitchen. Kitchen? Kitchen maid? It's quite a superior kitchen. It would have to be. I'm very sorry, my good woman, but I was never brought up to do rough house work. If you've nothing for a secretary or lady's companion, I wish you good morning. Oh, but don't take no notice of her, missus. I'll kick her up and down the high street for a bit. She'll come round. Uh, if anyone comes here looking for a job, you tell them there's one going up at Scatterbrook scaring rooks. As long as they don't expect no wages. Wurzel! Wurzel! Look, you can't go on like this. You've been sucking for three whole days. Stick a pitchfork in and that'll make him talk. I thought you were playing with your stupid football. I am when I can find it. He's probably pinched it and put it with his head. Wurzel! Aunt Sally, then. Maybe if you stop sucking, he'll stop sucking. John, put that down. If Wurzel sees you touching one of his heads, he'll suck for a fortnight. I've never seen this one before. I wonder what it's for. You heard what the lady said. Put that head down. Thank goodness he's talking again. Well, better still, you give it here. That's my bestest specialist head, this is. So we don't want the likes of you messing and messing around with it. Which head is that, Wurzel? Which head is this? Well, which one head does it look like? That's my happy head, so it is. We've never seen you in your happy head before. No, of course you ain't, because I ain't never wore it before. Nor will I, until the day dawns when I marries me Aunt Sally. And after that, my dears, after that, I wear me happy head always. Winter and summer alike, forever and ever, until the day comes when I falls into bits. Just so long as Aunt Sally's by my side. Folk will point me out in the street and I say, Here, look, there goes old Wurzel with his happy head on. And I say, Here, look, there goes 
say, yeah, yeah. Old words was born that at me yet, ever since the day that the Aunt Sally become his bride. Don't be so ridiculous! Oh. Well, I suppose I'd better put me up here, up in a bit of sack, in Oh, don't put it away. We can make some turnip soup out of it. I'm quite ravenous. How long have we been sulking? World record. Three days. Three days? Huh. That ain't nothing. I had a sulk once, went on for a fortnight, so it did. What were you both sulking about, anyway? Because she's too grand for it to go for a kitchen maid. That's what for. Of course I'm too grand to be a kitchen maid. Anybody can see that. I'm not stopping you from being a common gardener. It's a step up for you, anyway. It is that. But you've got to come with me, Aunt Sally. You heard what the lady says. It's a job for a couple. But, Wurzel, you've already got a job. You're supposed to be a scarecrow up in Ten Acre. And if you don't get there right this minute, Mr Braithwaite's going to throw you in the dustbin. He can do as he pleases, because I won't be here. Now, you read what he says on the card. With the card. Well, you've, got, you've got the card. It's in your penny winny pocket. Get it out and let it have a read of it. Read, read that, young missy, and see what it says. It says, wanted... Uh, Kitchen maiden gardener, all found, cup of tea and a slice of cake every afternoon and wages paid every Friday. Wurzel, this says nothing about a gardener and a kitchen maid. Yes, it do. No, it doesn't. Doesn't it? Have a look. We'll soon see about that. And me me reading it, young man. We'll soon put this right. Come on, reading it. Have a read of this. Blood. Blalter? What's a blalter? Butler! Butler and Parlourmaid! I can see what's happened. You've been given the wrong card. Parlourmaid? Did you say Parlourmaid? That's right, Aunt Sally. Balter and Parlourmaid. Oh, well, now, Parlourmaid's quite different from a kitchen maid. Kitchen maids come and get their knees all splintered from scrubbing floors. But Parlourmaid wears a pretty hat and apron, has chalky bickies with their elevenses. What about Balters? Do they get chocolate bickies? Oh, as much as you can cram down your throats. What are you looking at me like that for, little girl? I do know what I'm talking about. I happen to have been a parlour maid in a very grand house. Yes, we know Mrs. Bloomsbury Bartons, and she ended up calling the police. Silly woman. Yes, but the point is, this job's at Mrs. Bloomsbury Bartons too. Who cares? She won't recognise me. I've had my pretty face repainted and some new hair put in. It's not worth the risk, Aunt Sally. A job's only for a day. Anyway, what does he know about being a butler? I know everything there is to know. Yeah. What is a butler when he's at home? Look, he's a person who serves drinks on trays and looks down his nose like this. Ah, <laughs> I do that standing on my head so I could. As long as I've got the right head on, that is. You're a young man. Make yourself useful and chuck me down my posh hey. hey. This must be it. Well, then you can't. You'll get into terrible trouble. <laughs> That's much better. Uh, does I look like a bolter, my dear? Oh, every inch. Then should we toddle? Yes. Yes. Where is that wretched butler? And the extra parlour maid, no sign of her either, I suppose. Yes, Mum, they both arrived. Oh, thank heavens. Well, tell them to change at once. Yes, but Mum, I think... At I'll once, have... Enid, our luncheon guests will be arriving at any moment. And Enid... Yes, Mum? Uh, what is the butler's name? Gummidge, Mum. Gummidge. Well, tell Gummidge to bear in mind that he has been in my service for years and years. Have you got that? Years and years? Yes, Mum. Very well. As soon as he's changed, he may bring in the sherry decanter. And uh, the maid. What's her name, by the way? She calls herself Ermintrude, Mum. Oh, I... nonsense. I shall call her Ethel. She may bring in the cocktail snacks. Yes, Mum. Mmm, man, man, man. What's that? Oh, answer it. 
Have mercy on Sally. How that is the kindest, nicest thing that you ever hear. What are you doing with all these sausages? I ate them. What, all a million of them? It wasn't a million, silly. There was only a... Uh... Three? That's ain't true. There was more than three. There were three, and and another three, and another three, and another three. Anyway, you might have saved some of these sausages for old Wurzel. I should have. Could start for all I care. <laughs> Do come in, Lady Partington. Did you have a pleasant journey from Partington? Very pleasant, thank you. How nice of you to greet me on the doorstep. I feel quite like royalty. <laughs> well, you see, the butler's cleaning the family silver at the moment, so I told him I'd answer the door when you so graciously arrived. She wants a sherry decanter and a... Where are those cocktail snacks? E et them. I never. You'll cop it when I tell cook. We'll just have to have cheese footballs, that's all. Answer the door. Answer the door? <laughs> Yes? Oh, good day to you. My name is Baines. Oh, hi. Regrettably, Mrs. Baines is indisposed. I trust we can manage without an extra parliament. Yes, all the parliaments we need at the moment. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. No, 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 no. just a minute. You don't understand, my girl. I am the temporary bucket. Yeah, well, that's you ain't, you see, because I'm the temporary bouter. I'm very much doubt it. What's going on? This boot boy, whoever he is, appears to be a half -wit. Now, would you go and tell your mistress, please, that Baines has arrived? Oh, you're the gardener. Now, do I look like a gardener? Well, that's what it says here. What? Oh, some silly mix-up. Yes, they give me the wrong card. Ooh. Wait till the mistress hears about this. She'll go balmy. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. Look, uh, me and her have got to take in this bottle of drinks here and them cheesy footballs. We'll let the missus know there's been a bit of a mix-up, like what he says. Perhaps you'd like to eat in the butler's pantry. I certainly should. Would you like to walk this way, please? Yes, right. Try it off on you. There we are. The Walter's pantry. You're welcome. Just a minute. This isn't the butler's pantry, it's the coal cellar. That's right. We shall be quite a small party for luncheon, Lady Partington. Just ourselves, the vicar and his wife, and the Braithwaite. Oh, does one know the Braithwaites? Very important landowners. I did invite Sir George, but as you probably know, he is ill. And so brave. Why, I met him only this morning. He never even mentioned his illness. I wonder what's detaining Gummidge. Another of your guests? Oh, no, no, no. My butler. Oh. <laughs> I always feel it's such a comfort to be looked after by one's old family retainers. <laughs> Victor! <laughs> Phew! Yes, sir. Of well, course it's you. Who the young man she thinks you is? Here you are, Mrs. <laughs> you get a dollar for this, down ya? Feeling all right, my dear. Oh dear, Lady Pardon, tonight. I just came out of the I get these attacks myself. You should get your maid to burn a few feathers under your nose. Oh, you don't want to do that, Missus. No, no. Burning feathers sets a body on fire, so it will. Dear <laughs> Gummidge, oh, quite a candidate, don't you think? He's been with me so long. He's almost one of the family. <laughs> right, nice of you to say that, Missus. But seeing as our old words was one of the family, I think I'll just take the weight off my feet for a moment. <laughs> Sit me down here and have one or two of them cheesy footballs. That's because I hadn't had none of them little sausages, you see. She's had sausages, I ain't. The door, Gummidge. What? The door! What about it? Well, answer it! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Help Lady Park to, to a cheese football. Such a treasure. Yes? Mrs. Bloomsbury Barton? Uh, no, Gummidge. Where's all Gummidge? What are you up to, my man? This is Mrs. Bloomsbury Barton's house. Well, I know that, Mrs. You haven't come halfway up in the village to tell me a thing like that as yet. Uh, be so good as to inform your mistress that the Reverend Peacock and Mrs. Peacock have arrived. Why didn't you say so in the first place? Instead of wasting my time. 
You wait irrelevant. I always think it's a question of good breeding, Lady Parton. Oh, hey. you... There's a couple of peacocks on the front doorstep, Miss. Then show them away. Uh, they wander over from the home park, you know. They says to tell you that they's here. Oh, those peacocks. Oh, you silly man, Gummidge. Show the vicar and his wife in at once. And you, tell Cook we shall be lunching directly. Yes. Lunching directly, eh? Hey? What are we having? Oh, it's ignorant. It's not for us. It's for them. Well, why for don't we get the lunch, then? We does all the work. They get all the slices of cake and sausage in. It ain't fair. The madam says you can come in. Well, come on, come on. What are you waiting for? She's in there. Blooming doorbells. Worse than them dang bells of urine wakes me and my rubbing up of a Sunday morning. Oh, you three, is it? What do you want? Uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Braithwaite. Oh, I know who you is right enough, mister. I reckon the old parish knows who you is. Because you don't pay us no wages. That's how they knows who you is. Don't pay no wages? What's he talking about? I think he's a bit funny. Just tell Mrs. Bloomsbury Barton we've arrived. She knows that already, Mrs. With you ringing the doorbell fit to make a dead pig. Mrs. Bloomsbury Barton sends her commitments and says for you to shove off. What? Yeah, doesn't want your sort round here. And if there's any dinners going, it's for them what's earned it. You know what it is. He's been at the cooking sherry. I'm sure it'll be quite all right if you just tell mm -hmm. Mrs. Bloomsbury... And after all the free eggs she's had from me. Oh, it's not her, it's that barmy servant. Come on, let's see if there's another way in. Gummidge, who was that at the door? Uh, just a couple of raggled taggled gypsies, missus, selling clothes pegs. You better announce lunch. I can't keep Lady Partington waiting any longer. Very good, missus. I'm afraid the Braithwaite's have been unavoidably detained. Managing the estate keeps them very busy, you know. Your dinner is served, ma'am. There's some more French windows round this way, I seem to remember. Let's see if they're open. Oh, rather chilly for the time of year, don't you think? <laughs> You're right there, missus. <laughs> you may serve soup, therefore. There are breadcrumbs in Lady Partington's and soup plate. Oh, ah, so there is. <laughs> Maybe she likes a bit of bread in her soup. Same as what I does. Get rid of them. Do this, do that, do the other. It's a, such a pleasure to meet you, Lady Partington. And my husband used to be a curate in your parish, you know. Oh, did you? That must have been when I was in India. You must know the Archbishop. Uh, no, uh, not personally, Your Ladyship. I'll introduce you. You will probably have much in common. What oh, person staring in at the window? Oh, there's them dang gypsies again. Buzz off! Buzz off! Stay buzzed off! I, I told them to go away, Mrs., but they don't take no notice. Serve the wine, Gummidge. Serve them wine? Oh, I'll never go away if I serve some wine, Mrs. She means the wine for this lot, stupid. Don't you say so. Serve the Partington first. You clumsy oaf, Gummidge. Look what you're doing. Begging your pardon, Mrs. Soon mop it up for you. What an unusual brush. Is it from India? No, it's from that there old oak tree down in Foggy Bottom. <gasps> Help! <laughs> oh, really? I don't know which of you is the more stupid. You, help me clean up that mess. And you serve the main course. Dinner coming up, is it? He, he really should be in a home. But he begs and pleads to go on working. Do this, do that, do tether. It's worse being a bolter than a dime scarecrow. Ah, bubbles to her. I'll have a sit down. Over the hangman's that. Oh, it's you again, is it? No, I've had enough of you for one day. Yeah, well, I've had enough of you for hundreds of days. We don't want 
any more of your cheek and impudence, just take us to Mrs. Bloomsbury Barton. Oh. So you still want to see her, does he? Mm. Very well, then. Follow me. About time, too! She's in there. That's not the dining room. That's right, they're not their dinner. Now they're downstairs playing billiards. <laughs> come on, come on. Yeah. I do hope you're all partial to turkey. My dear, I'm so famished, I'd be partial to anything I can get. Do find out what's keeping gummage. Yes, sir. A little more wine, Lady Partington. Thank you. <laughs> be the Archbishop's butler. Yes, madam, yes, yes, yes. How extraordinary. Well, what were you doing in the fireplace? I was pushed down the coal cellar, madam, by this individual posing as a temporary butler. I'm not a temporary butler. I'm a proper butler. I don't understand. I thought he was an old family retainer. Oh, he is. He's been with me for years and years, but only on a temporary basis. <laughs> Baines is here to assist him, aren't you, Baines? Quite so, madam, yes. And now, this old uh, gentleman will kindly take these things. I shall be delighted to serve luncheon. Thank you. Thank you so much, Baines. Your two other guests, madam. Mr. and Mrs. Braithwaite. Get him! Hold him! 